Good morning, problem solvers, and we're live. Welcome to Chief here, the professional problem solver and best-selling author with Cracking the Code to Success. Have you read that book? It's absolutely phenomenal. Make sure you check it out. Who is showing up today? Today we're going to talk about the most destructive habits, the most destructive daily habits that uh, we're all victims of, or at least we have been at some point of our life. But the whole point is to stop doing those things and to replace those habits with some more positive ones, right? So who's in here? Please say hello, share this stream so more and more people can watch this. And we're going to get right into it right into the six or seven maybe I know at least five but maybe we'll come up with more destructive habits as we start talking right what do that what do I mean by that see we do a lot of things in life that uh, are just are just uh, things that we never questioned right habits that we developed because of uh, our environment, because of our parents, because of our cultural beliefs. So we develop a lot of, uh, a lot of habits that don't really lead to happiness, right? So circumstances sometimes could make our life difficult and could make us unhappy. And, you know, most of our happiness doesn't come from circumstances it comes from the thoughts that we have in our mind so we could control that the only thing that we could control is our thoughts our, our thoughts basically control our emotions and our emotions lead to our actions right so we could control ourselves by starting to control our thoughts okay who is in here please say hello I see there's some some people here so please say hello and uh, we're gonna get right into this Jonathan Dawson my best friend in the world good morning sir how are you today thanks for uh, thanks for watching this so um, the theme of the day the topic of the day is some habits that uh, create unhappiness in our life and I think the first the first habit is aiming for perfection you know this this thing I'm definitely faulty of and I lived uh, um, you know the first two three years of my business were uh, self-sabotaging and a lot of the a lot of my a lot of my unhappiness came from fighting for perfectionism fighting to be perfect right I was trying to have the perfect website I was trying to have uh, the perfect uh, appearance and I was trying to have the perfect pitch and everything was was perfect and if I didn't have the, if I wasn't satisfied with it I wouldn't take action right so um, does life need to be perfect so we're happy absolutely not you know as a matter of fact most happy people and most successful people out there they say that uh, if you're not happy without having all the things that you want if you're not happy without the money let's say for example then most likely you won't be happy with the money that's why they say money magnifies people right so we need to figure out a way uh, to be to be happy and figure out what makes us happy we need to be honest with ourselves right so uh, do you have to behave in a perfect way uh, and get perfect results to be happy absolutely no absolutely no sometimes we don't behave in the best uh, of our abilities and we don't have perfect results all the time and that's why many people um, you know they they use a different type of security for that um, and a lot of successful people would say shoot for the stars and land on the moon uh, in martial arts uh, I just recently learned how to break this uh, these blocks right so in martial arts the sensei teaches you how to go way past the block in order to break it because if you don't if you don't uh, aim for way past for going through for way down if you don't aim for way further you're most likely are going to stop yourself before you break it right so the happiness will not be easy to find you know if if we set the bar way too high uh it will be it will be tough right uh, if we're waiting for for the money if we're waiting for whatever we're waiting for in order to be happy then um, this is really 
counterproductive because nobody is guaranteed another day. We don't know if we're going to be alive tomorrow. We don't know if we're going to be alive five years from now. We don't know if we're going to be alive, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now. We don't know if we're going to be alive the next 15, 20 minutes. So uh, making plans is, is you know, it's, it, it could be, it's, it's great. I mean, everybody should make plans. Everybody could make plans. But uh, uh, if you set the bar uh, and wait for certain things to happen, good morning, Valentina. If you wait for certain things to happen, may, it may not be a smart thing to do, right? So uh, another, another daily habit that we're faulty of and that we need to change is living in the sea of negative voices. Uh, the great Jim Rahn said that uh, the five people you surround yourself with are basically the average of what you become. So sometimes we, our environment is just a sea of negative voices, right? Or even worse, uh, these negative voices are in our head, right? So um, I call them ants. Actually, I don't call them ants. I heard uh, a neurologist call, call these negative thoughts ants. And I believe ants stand for automatic negative thought. Yeah, ant. So killing the ants, destroying the ants is one of the things that every one of us need to learn how to do, right? So here's a practical, practical tip on something you could try today, okay? So if you are having these negative thoughts, if you feel sad, if you feel in, uh, in a bad place, right? Sit down and write down exactly what you're experiencing, exactly what you're thinking about, and then ask yourself a few questions, right? The first question you want to ask yourself is, is this true? I mean, this is a logical, logical question to ask. So whatever is bothering you, whatever makes you feel sad, whatever is the, that negative thought that you feel you can't control, that's why they call it automatic negative thoughts, ants. Whatever that is, that, that it keeps coming, it keeps coming, you don't want to think about it, but it keeps coming to you, no matter what that is, uh, sit down, write it down, analyze it, and go deep. Go really, really deep. Find out, first of all, is it true? If it isn't true, then why dwelling on it, right? What, what smart person, what normal person like you are, good morning, Mohammed, uh, would, be, would be dwelling and would be sad over something that's not even a fact, something that's not even true, right? So, sometimes... Uh, some people are lucky and that's enough for them to uh, get rid of those negative thoughts. In case we can't, then we need to ask another question. Uh, besides the fact whether or not this is true, where does it come from? We need to find the source. Where does it come from? Does it come from a person? Does it come from an event? Does it come from, from something that took place? And we need to find the source and wherever it's coming from, we need to forgive that person. We need to we need to let go of that situation. Understand that it happened in the past, and things that happen in the past belong in the past. And that leads me to the third tip. Okay, so hopefully this helps. This exercise helps. When we're surrounded by these negative voices, right, uh, it, it becomes harder and harder to be to be happier. And um, sometimes we're dragged down by these negative voices all the way on the floor. We're, we're so powerless. We don't have any energy to do simple things, right? Uh, they lead to depression, right? So uh, these voices will always tell you to be unhappy and life is dangerous and, and not to do things. And uh, voices are filled with worry and with limits and, uh, it, and just basically when you're surrounded by people that have negative perspective on life, those are the voices that you're going to start hearing in your head as well. So, uh, to go back to the next daily habit that I feel it's negative and it's, it's leading us to unhappiness, not towards happiness. So the first one is aiming for perfection. The second one is uh, clearing, uh, is living in a sea of, of negative voices, living with, with people surrounded by uh, we're surrounded by negative people or even worse we have these negative voices in our head right so the third one is being stuck in the past or just as equally bad is to be stuck in the future and I am faulty of both right so 
I have been uh, severely depressed in my life when I was very much stuck in the past and that was that was a few years back and I was lucky enough to overcome that right and then for uh, um, when I started my business and when I started my coaching agency when when I when I start I'm a dreamer okay I'm a Sagittarius so I, I'm, I'm an I'm a extreme optimist I was stuck in the future for too long right so I started my company with with big capital I was able to save up a lot of money uh, during my sales career and I didn't need to borrow money to start my company so I invested my hard-earned money into my company I poured everything that I had I, I hired some people I was inexperienced unexperienced and I had a big vision and it was all about the vision and and, and um, I didn't put in the work before the vision right I didn't uh, focus on the adversity and I was very lucky when I started my company I landed my dream client uh, was my first client so it was it was very fast and success is a very lousy teacher right so you can't learn much from success you can learn a lot from adversity but you can't learn much from success the only thing you can learn from success is that you cannot win and that is wrong that is that you cannot lose and that is wrong you know that's what success is teaching you success gives you confidence success rides you on that wave where you're thinking wow everything is so great um, it's it's good to be blessed it's good to be humble but at some point when things come easy in your life you're starting to lose connection with reality and you think that you cannot lose so that's why success is a lousy teacher and you have to be content when when things are going well you have to be you have to be grateful you have to be happy obviously uh, but you also have to be alert right and the other thing is we got a question what things in our life what events in our life that we feel are good uh, what do they lead to sometimes we think that some things are good for us like I've been with some girlfriends in the past right I was with a with a beautiful girl and when I was with her I thought I was super happy well if somebody asked me are you happy I would say I am super happy look at that beautiful gorgeous girl right but this girl was not good for me right so you never know sometimes when you think and, and you're thinking I have a girlfriend everything is beautiful everything is nice she's so gorgeous and we're, we're having these good times uh, but at the same time it slows you down from other events in your life that are extremely important so a lot of the times what we think it's good in our life ends up being ends up hurting us and what we think it's bad in our life ends up being the biggest blessing from uh, uh, of our life so we gotta look at adversity and we gotta look at success in a different way right we have to be alert when we're successful when we're lucky when we're, we're happy we have to be alert I'm not saying not to be happy but not to be irresponsible is what I'm suggesting so we have to be happy and at the same time when adversity hits us when circumstances happen we need to be also alert and um, we need to be humble and we need to understand that this is a lesson to be learned and this is increasing our threshold of uh, how much we can take how much pain we can take so getting stuck in the past uh, is definitely counterproductive the past belongs in the past the future belongs in the future in order for us to be the best version of ourselves, we need to be present now so many many people are not focused right now there's so many distractions with these phones with, with, with social media with everything that's going on so in order for you to be to make a better tomorrow to make better tomorrows to make a lot of uh, of good things in the future you have to give it your best today so you need to be present you need to be focused you know there's so many people are confused with multitasking there's no such thing as multitasking okay there's no such thing as multitasking you either focus on one thing and you do it right or you're gonna do a few things half-assed right so getting stuck in the past is just as equally bad as being stuck in the future don't get stuck in the future one of the things that uh, that I live by and my mantra is I don't uh, based on based on my past I know who I don't want to be right so whatever I've experienced in my past I am clear on who I'm not and I know who I want to be in the future so today I'm gonna work towards that 
man that has a rhyme I've been in the past so I know who I'm not and in order for me to be who I want in the future I have to work on that today right so <laughs> anyways I try to make this rap song but uh, getting stuck in the past or being stuck in the future too much is bad obviously it's not terrible to have plans to have vision to have goals it's good for for you to have goals but you also have to be prepared uh, that you might you might die tomorrow so you have to live your days your moments to the fullest right I am certainly I have unfair advantage all right because I, I was in near death experience about a year ago almost a year ago and I was in a in a bad car accident so I had absolutely no scratches no physical body God saved me and I had the reason to believe and I had met death so so close that I have a reason to believe that that we don't control any of that process okay so all we have to do is focus on on the present focus on the present this is what matters right now and obviously it's good to have a plan to have a vision to have direction on where you want to go on what you want to achieve and who you want to become but forget the past the only thing from the past you have to remember is who you don't want to be that's how you learn the lessons from the past if there's something embarrassing about your past something that you're ashamed of then you know you don't want that in your life anymore and you have all the control to avoid it that's the whole point okay the next one is uh, comparing comparing is a big big problem and it's the main reason for the biggest fear in today's world okay the biggest fear in today's world is fear of other people's opinion fear of other people's opinions so that's full pull full pull full pull so that is the biggest fear right it used to be the fear of uh, public speaking the fear of death is number one right so if you overcome the fear of that you're golden right fear of death is number one fear of public speaking I overcame this one as well uh, if you overcome that you are going to be in good shape but the most important fear to overcome in today's world the most relevant fear and the most common fear in today's world is fear of other people's opinion like what do I think um, instead of me living my life if I focus my energy on what you think about my haircut or whether or not you're gonna start judging my t-shirt don't wait create or whether or not uh, you're going to start judging my accent or whatever if I am focused on that then I'm not living my life I'm not living my best life right so instead of that I love you and I don't really care about your opinion this is how simple life is right I mean if your opinion is good I'll accept it if, if you're giving me good energy if you're sending me love I'll open my heart to it but if you think that I'm not good enough I'm just gonna move on and do the things that I feel are right for me right so love other people but their opinion is not as important so much for your development for your life for your happiness uh, as much as your opinion about yourself so learn to self-love learn to love yourself to accept yourself to stop criticizing yourself you know and uh, accept yourself exactly the way you are exactly the way you are so comparing yourself and your life to others is the biggest reason for fear of other people's opinion right because see when I grew up we didn't have Instagram so I couldn't see what my neighbors are doing right and how they're how they're living life now with Instagram you could be in the middle of nowhere and you could see some people you could see some people doing way better than you uh, having way more and it's on the other spectrum that most of the Instagram heroes are fake most of the Instagram heroes are fake so just because somebody is taking a picture with a Lambo I mean I can take pictures with the hottest cars I don't like I don't want to fool you I want I want to be authentic I want to be genuine so most of the Instagram things are fake and that's what drives you nuts it's just comparing yourself to others comparing is a big big problem comparing is a huge problem and unfortunately it's not always your fault sometimes comparing starts 
with your parents. When you come home, your good morning Alex, when you come home sometimes from school, your parents would compare you to other kids, right? So your parents might say, hey listen, uh, look, at, look at your neighbor, right? He has straight A's, how come you don't have straight A's? He goes to play with you and blah, blah, blah. So they're gonna start comparing you. They're gonna start comparing you and that's going to hurt because you have that natural competition against your peers anyways, if you're a competitive kid, so the comparing could start with your parents and you could keep that comparison by yourself you could take that lead and keep that for the rest of your life and start comparing yourself to others right comparing myself to guys that started 30 years ago in the business right people are comparing me i go to i go to uh, sell my services i go to pitch somebody and say what's the difference between you and this guy well uh why are you comparing us we're totally different look at i'm so much taller i'm so much younger i'm so much better looking i've got so much better energy right why are you comparing me to this guy right we're not the same we're totally different right we have different experience with life we're bringing different things to the table you should hire both of us or you could hire both of us but don't compare me to the other person right so I bring totally different value to the table. Stop comparing yourself. Comparing could be good if you do it by yourself for yourself. Like for example, if I compare myself to a previous version of myself, that could lead to motivation sometimes. Like for example, if somebody sees you um, gaining weight, right? And, or you, you catch yourself gaining too much weight catch yourself in the mirror and you say man I and you look at a picture from two years ago and say I was a better version two years ago I can get back to that version if I start working out so comparing as long as it works for motivation is good any other situation comparing is bad and you need to avoid it if you cannot control it avoid it by any cost do not compare yourself your situation to others as a matter of fact would you change your life I have a very good question for you. <clears throat> I had a sore throat the whole last week, last week, right? So I was, I had this question in my mind the entire time that I was, I was, I've, me, I've meant to ask you and I forgot. So this question is, what would you rather have? Billion dollars and sore throat for the rest of your life or be broke but to be immune from having so sore throat for the rest of your life. Which one would you rather have? To have billion dollars and have sore throat for the rest of your life or have no money and be immune from having a sore throat? Which one would you prefer? Tell me. Because during this, during this one week of every time when you swallow, you feel sore throat during that week, I gotta tell you, man, I was willing to pay. I was willing to pay the price. I was willing to pay the price to get rid of this. Imagine how you're gonna enjoy, enjoy all of your private jets, all of these beautiful people in your life, and every time when you swallow, every time you feel your sore throat. So don't compare. You know, sometimes you see rich people, rich people going through terrible adversity, and you know. It's, it's just life is balanced life is balanced right don't compare yourself to others you don't know what they're going through and they don't know what you're going through all right the next one is uh, focusing on the negative details in life you know how some people say focus on the positive in every situation one of the habits is like I, I know some friends I have I have some friends I have some relatives I have some very close relatives like my pops is that way right so in every situation, my dad could see something negative, right? And I, I have some friends that are like that. And, you know, being an extreme optimist is really, really, really um, counterproductive for me to be around those people, right? So if I get excited about an idea, I, I go into inception very easy, right? So if I get excited, I'm a very good starter. I start things, I organize, I start, I march towards whatever the new thing is, right? So that negative person will always kick you in the gut with, with several reasons why this wouldn't work, why this is unrealistic, why, this, uh, uh, why you're going to fail, right? So 
those people are dangerous stay away from those people okay uh, you know if you focus on each negative detail about life you can see life as storm after storm after storm and oasis at some point or you can see life as oasis after like paradise heaven heaven and storm once in a while so the way you see life basically tells me who you are right so you could live in a constant storm and once in a while you get lucky with some sun or you could live a sunny beautiful life and accept that there's going to be some storms at some point there's going to be some rainy days right so which one are you which one are you focusing on the negative details or the positive details like when something terrible happens to me adversity i try to find out what is the lesson here what is the lesson what am i trying to learn what am i trying to learn what is the lesson what is the lesson what is the message what is the message you're sending me right so i try to figure this out and um in order to cut this short I, I was trying to keep this short how many minutes have we oh 8 35 I'm, I'm late for my other show i need to cut this short the number six is uh is overcoming over complicating life let's not over complicate life okay life is simple enough so let's not over complicate life let's just focus on working our land let's do the best we can today let's be present for our children let's be present for our uh, employees employers let's be present for the people that that we talk to let's give everyone we meet today 120 percent of our attention let's practice focus today and let's make it a must today to make somebody smile to lift somebody up to make somebody feel happy and deserving and accept it to make somebody not feel alone so this is my challenge to you go out there and make the world a better place thank you so much for joining me i'll be here again tomorrow at 8 a.m sharing my wisdom sharing my experience sharing my love sharing my passion i'm going to share with you some things that i'm working on share with you some things that i'm learning and hopefully you can learn something from that as well make sure you share that video with somebody that you feel needs to hear this Make it a great day and um, I will see you again tomorrow.